Good morning and welcome to Face the Nation. We begin this morning with counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, who joins us from her home in New Jersey. Kellyanne, always good to have you with us. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, the president and his national security team made statements that to most people sounded very different in the characterization of what Russia did and is doing now with our elections. And we just played those clips of how unequivocal the language was from his national security team. Why isn't the president echoing that same and amplifying that same message? Well, Margaret, it was the president's idea to have his national security team go to the podium in the White House press briefing room to go and share with the country and indeed the world that Russia meddled in the 2016 election. There continue to be active cybersecurity, cyber warfare uh, campaigns, if you will, by North Korea, Iran, China, certainly Russia. And this president wants to make very clear that he was not the president in 2016 when evidence of Russian interference and meddling in our democracy in 2016 was presented to that president and his security team and buried because they wanted the other person to win and indeed thought she would win the presidency. This president is not burying it. I was in that briefing with the president the Friday before, and I was there to witness firsthand when the president directed his national security team to go and tell everyone what's happening. I think also earlier last week, you saw Secretary of Homeland Security Kirsten Nielsen and our Vice President Mike Pence up in New York hosting a cybersecurity conference where they made very clear cybersecurity and election security are important priorities. I would note that according to most objective analyses, the number one topic this calendar year by the mainstream media on television is, is in fact Russia and the elections. And, and yet when the president says Russia hoax, he's not talking about Russia meddling. He's been very clear about that as his team and he was very clear in Ohio last night. Thanks for playing the clip. The president, when he says Russia hoax, he means the investigation and some others on TV, never under oath, wanting to suggest that somehow Russian meddling in the 2016 election was successful in changing a single vote or indeed the electoral outcome. And we know that. We know Judge T.S. Ellis in that Virginia courtroom mm -hmm. in the Manafort trial has specifically instructed folks to not mention Russia, Trump, or collusion. That but, hardly but stops people from going on TV mentioning I, Russia collusion and Trump. I, I hear your point, and, and the message from the podium was very clear, which is why the question is, why is the president not drawing a more clear distinction to what you just drew, which was a difference between his election, uh, the validity of it or questions around that, and uh, the facts as presented by the national security team. I mean, the national security advisor today said Russia was the principal violator in 2016, and their activity now puts them in the lead, not North Korea, not China. No, I was making the point about this cyber warfare all across the world, but in terms of the meddling, there's no question. And Ambassador Bolton has made that clear, Director Ray, Secretary Nielsen, Director Coates, and they work for the president who asked them to go and share with everyone what he had heard unclassified the Friday before. I was there. So I want to repeat that. And you saw last night in Ohio the president talking about Russia meddling, that it has to stop, others need to stop. But when he talks about the hoax, he's talking about this fantasy, this unproven fantasy that somehow the campaign that I successfully managed for the successful part of the campaign was in cahoots with Russians. As you know, Margaret, because you covered it. I, we were, our campaign was talking to people in Mecklenburg County, North Carolina, and Macomb County, Michigan, not in Moscow. Mm -hmm. And the president has every right to wonder why, where there seems to have been nefarious activity, folks don't want to investigate. They don't want to investigate the loser. The number four at the Department of Justice's wife working with the people at GPS, at Fusion GPS and the Steele dossier. There's a new FOIA request now mm -hmm. against uh, former minority leader Harry Reid and his, his potential action there. We know that Christopher Steele uh, talked about the dossier 12 times after President Trump tried to initiate a conversation about that 12 times after President Trump was elected. Um, so yes, there we'll is frustration about, we'll that the loser that and the people trying to prop ahead. her up as a weak candidate have not been investigated. We will talk about some of that with one of the people handling some of the investigation there uh, ahead in the show. But I do also want to ask you, since I know you speak to the president, um, 
Can you clarify some of his statements in the past 24 hours, particularly on Twitter? He's not the only president to have an adversarial relationship with the press, but his language really seems to have escalated today, saying that the fake news media cause war and they're very dangerous and sick. What wars have journalists started? Margaret, I think the president's entire point is this, that we do have a, a news media that includes some reporters. So this should not be a broad brush by any a statement. I've said that before. His daughter said it last week. And I know he believes it's not all. That's why he said it, it really refers to those who aren't always telling the truth and who are giving emotion over information, who are talking more about their own egos than doing everyman interviews. I was at that rally with the president in Pennsylvania on Thursday, I walked around and talked to people in the crowd. They're so excited about what they see in terms of progress and prosperity. Some members of the press tend to cover the parts of the rally that were about the press. Mm -hmm. But most of the people hear the major part, which is about the people and the progress and the prosperity. But you Look, know, Margaret, you're a serious reporter. You've worked your way to the anchor seat at Face the Nation. You were a foreign war correspondent. The idea that you share an industry with the New York Times opinion writer who had racist tweets a couple short years ago, cancel white people, do they burn as quickly in the sun? Just really terrible but things. Kellyanne, and then, of know, course, Mark Caputo of Politico this week going to the rally in Tampa, excuse but you me, know and referring to Trump supporters as, quote, garbage people. If you put them I all know together, you have a full set of teeth. To security That's the state of journalism because today. You've been the, the victim of some targeting, and I know you're yes. sensitive to this. So, can't you understand the difference, though? Uh, when the president escalates, that there is actually, at times, physical danger, potentially, that there is a risk here, that the president may want to change that rhetoric. The president wants people to give information, news they can use. And I got to tell you, there are a large, a, a growing swath of, of reporters, all of whom, or most of whom I feel like I have a decent relationship with, uh, that are sitting in the press briefing room who have contracts on cable TV where they say things and they say things on Twitter they would not get away with in print. It would not pass even the most virulently anti-Trump editor's desk. And so I think those standards are much lower on Twitter for these journalists, certainly on TV. Mm -hmm. I've been talking about this for two straight years now since the campaign. I think the temperature needs to be dialed down overall. And but, you don't uh, believe that journalists are the enemy get, of the people? I don't believe journalists are the enemy of people. I think some journalists are an enemy of the relevant Thank you. and enemy of the news you can use. And I think that most of the, most of the sins are sins of omission, not commission, meaning why wouldn't right. more reporters, Margaret, cover the vice president receiving the remains of our fallen in North Korea? Why less than a minute on one of the major cable stations? Why well, wouldn't we covered they cover it here more on that the president Kelly, held Kelly forth we did African cover it here on pastors? CBS. And I know. Uh, and, and look, I'm much more. I got to tell you, that, I don't Kellyanne. mention the journalist by name. I don't. I, I don't mention mm -hmm. the journalist by name. But I'm much more interested in the work of Alex Acosta than Jim Acosta, our labor secretary, <laughs> because he's presiding over an economic boom. We we it Kelly, was we, predicted. We boom have is to what leave we have that. In our we have to leave it here, um, unfortunately, Kellyanne. But I do want to get to some of the other topics we touched on with our next guest. So thank you.